All right, on to our main story. It has been a wild ride for the crypto industry since FTX confirmed its liquidity crisis last week with new details emerging every day. So Crypto World took a moment to break down just how FTX's collapse happened, including its ties to Terra's collapse back in May. The demise of algorithmic stablecoin Terra and its sister token Luna in May of 2022 wreaked havoc on the crypto industry. Check out this stable coin. Stable coin. Uh, Terra's Luna breaking its one to one peg to the dollar, plunging to as low as 26 cents this morning. What's happening with Terra USD? How is it not a black eye for the entire industry? It's one of the worst scandals in the history of the crypto industry. Digital currency prices were decimated and several businesses were forced to declare bankruptcy as their investments in the failed projects came back to haunt them. But amidst the drama of those days and weeks after Terra's collapse, Sam Bankman-Fried, who founded trading firm Alameda Research in 2017 and crypto exchange FTX in 2019, quickly rose as the savior of the industry. SBF, as he's also known, and his companies poured billions of dollars of liquidity into the space, bailing out businesses like BlockFi and Voyager Digital. As recently as August, SBF told CNBC that FTX had a billion dollars in cash to deploy at any given moment. It's not going to be good for anyone long term if we have real pain, if we have like real blowouts and uh, and it's not fair to customers and it's not going to be good for regulation. It, like, it's not going to be good for anything. From a longer term perspective, it's just that was what was important. For, for the ecosystem is what was important for customers and was what was important for people to be able to operate in the ecosystem without being terrified that unknown unknowns were gonna blow them up somehow. It seemed like SBF had become the white knight of crypto, the lender of last resort for an entire industry. And for a while, things were looking up. The price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies leveled out and developers continued to build new projects. But now, nearly six months to the day after Terra Luna collapsed, FTX has filed for bankruptcy protection and Sam Bankman-Fried faces investigations from U.S. regulators and potentially the Department of Justice. So what went wrong? On November 2nd, a report published by Coindesk found that Alameda Research, a trading firm launched by SBF to trade thousands of digital assets, was heavily invested in FTX's own token, FTT. It was a question as to whether or not they were you know, fully solvent or, or fully able to, to continue operations um, to, uh, in, in the way that they have been. After the report, Binance CEO Chang Peng Zhao tweeted that the company would be selling its FTT holdings due to, quote, recent revelations. Then there was this whole kind of back and forth over Twitter between CZ, who runs Binance, versus SBF. And everybody from the Alameda and FTX side said, there's nothing to, there's nothing to see here. We're totally fine. We're, we're completely solvent. No questions asked. But that didn't last. A short time later, Bankman Free tweeted that Binance had reached a deal to acquire FTX, did about a day of due diligence looking through FTX's finances, but Binance reportedly didn't like what it saw and backed out of the deal just a day later. With few options remaining to save the company, on November 11th, FTX filed for bankruptcy protection and Sam Bankman-Fried stepped down as CEO. It's a blow to the industry that we didn't need right now. And it all started because of a simple tweet that CZ did because it created a run on the bank and it proved that FTX was actually insolvent, which is, which really is devastating to the industry, which you can now see from the prices across the board. It turns out FTX didn't have a billion dollars to deploy. Instead, it had a gaping hole in its balance sheet. A report from Reuters found that the exchange was transferring billions in customer funds to Alameda Research to shore up the trading firm's business. Sources told Reuters that a large portion of that money disappeared and that top executives had bookkeeping back doors to prevent some of those transfers from being noticed. It's likely that they were starting to have issues in June and, and maybe they were actually more wrapped up in the Luna and Three Arrows debacle um, than they let on. And either FTX had a hole because of that or, or maybe Luna, or Alameda had a hole because of that. And um, you know, one was used to plug the other. That's the only kind of reasonable way that we can assume that something to the tune of $10 billion goes missing. Those transfers went unnoticed until customers rushed to withdraw funds amid uncertainty over the company's finances. When you're running in a fractional reserve uh, process, withdrawals are actually you know, the thing that start to, to pull your lifeblood away. So after the collapse of one of the most trusted names in crypto, 
Where does the industry go from here? Um, there's a lot of travesty going on at individuals, families, employees of the place, people who put money into the system um, indirectly and directly. Uh, indirectly meaning there were people who trusted the whole capital markets of crypto and now they've lost a lot of that trust on the retail side. So the indirectly they've been affected. But I remember Lehman, there were people who put all of their bonuses back into Lehman stock. And then when it happened, it seemed like it happened all overnight. And you have families who lost their life savings. There are similar situations here. And I think those are the people that we should think about and try to support um, as much as possible. The first big issue is contagion, when other businesses could go under because of their ties to FTX. The crypto exchange says it has more than a million creditors and up to $50 billion in debt. The other issue is making sure something like this doesn't happen again. Some in the crypto space say the industry needs to step up and regulate itself because lawmakers around the world have been slow to enact guidelines. Others say this latest disaster could move regulators to act much, much faster. I think regulation was coming regardless, and now it will come really, really quickly. This is a case of unregulated centralized finance running away with it again, committing you know, potentially uh, illegal actions. And so I think if we can take the time to educate lawmakers and, and regulators on what is decentralized, what is centralized, why is there a dichotomy there, and, and how massive is this separation, um, ultimately we'll be fine, but that that's really the education process that we're stepping into right now.